Hello, this is Ed Rigsby. I am the executive director of the Cigar Peg Inc. Philanthropy Through Fun. Cigar Peg is a nonprofit charity that's been around since 1999 and is loosely, very loosely, affiliated with the National Speakers Association. Most of the Cigar Peg members are professional speakers. What this is all about is our first ever showcase. It's really my desire to try to bring my two worlds together, my world of association executives and my world of professional speakers. I think we need one another. And so let's launch. I think we've got a great uh, showcase for you and let's see how it goes. We have Val Grubb. She uh, helps companies grow their bottom line by elevating employees from tactical thinkers to strategic thinkers with extensive corporate experience, including founding the Oxygen, Oxygen Channel, which that's pretty cool, and Interactive Corp. She understands how companies work on the shop floor, in the C-suite, and everywhere in between. Val would be giving us tips on how to influence without authority, without authority, sorry, how to give influence without authority. Sorry, Val. Here's Val. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ed. And it's very tough to follow Joe. Um, but hello to all and thanks so much, uh, everybody, for joining us this morning. Um, so one critical component of leadership today is influence. And even if you have an executive title, influence is still critical for your success. In fact, the world is littered with CEOs who were ousted after a year because they could not influence employees to follow their vision. That's why this topic is so important. And that said, leaders can exist at all levels within organizations. I deliver a keynote that goes into specifics for leaders within corporate America to up their influencing game. In fact, all of my keynotes are tailored to the audience. And that includes this session. I thought I would expand on a couple influencing ideas that may be useful for folks in attendance this morning, or I guess this afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, so first, people are influenced by those they respect and deem an expert. So share your knowledge. Contribute articles or blog posts on topics that demonstrate your expertise. Be visible on LinkedIn or sign up to guest on podcasts. For existing clients, I also write white papers. I also forward articles that, can, that they can share internally. And my goal with that is to help them succeed in their day-to-day -day and look like a rock star in front of their boss. And that by being, by showing this expertise, that makes me the go-to person when they need killer keynotes. People are also more influenced by people that they like. So focus on building relationships before you need something from them. I use LinkedIn to find commonalities to start conversations. The best connection, of course, is having a friend or a business contact in common, but I also review their interests at the bottom of their LinkedIn profile. Um, I also look for alumni from the schools that I've attended. I review uh, also, you know, Google, right? You can just Google anybody and there's so few things you can't find out about somebody. So look at those connections and I use those for conversation starters or to stay in touch with existing clients. I also set up Google alerts uh, for key companies and also for client names so that I'm aware of what's happening in their realm. It's a great excuse to reach out and offer congratulations or assistance depending on what's going on in their world. And it's amazing at how much business I've done over this last 2020 because of the fact that I'm helping people through a very challenging time in their life. And it's interesting in how many have boomeranged back and are now hiring me uh, for keynotes and training uh, because of the fact that I was there reaching out to them to help them uh, when perhaps they now didn't have a job. So again, really, again, people are influenced by people that they like, stay in connection with people. Next, share your successes. So many of us don't toot our own horn. 
We expect our bosses or our clients just to see how awesome we are. Um, that's the wrong approach in today's hyper-competitive world. Ask your fellow employees to share that awesomeness, to put it in writing to your boss or to do a recommendation on LinkedIn. Now, I'm not suggesting they, do, they write every little thing that you do, right? That would be a book. Um, but where they feel you went above and beyond, make sure that's shared with people who matter in your world. Also, keep your boss aware of the challenges you've experienced and how you've solved it. When I worked in corporate America, I sent through a short Friday status report and I highlighted top three accomplishments that were uh, uh, completed that week, but I also note the top two challenges that were knocked down that week something that would matter to my boss. It allowed him or her to, to be in the know while also illustrating my ability to problem solve. That sort of stuff matters. Finally, up your Zoom game. I know Zoom is tough, I totally get it, um, but it's really critical to exude executive presence on Zoom and on video. After all, if you don't, demonstrate confidence in what you're presenting, why should anyone believe what you're selling and say yes to your proposal? Why should anyone see you as the expert if you're struggling getting that across? So again, my ideas, influenced by respect, share your expertise, uh, be likable, become friends before you need something from somebody, share your successes and up your game on Zoom. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I, of course, have a white paper um, with additional tips for influencing without authority, which I would be delighted to share. Um, and outside of that, best of luck and stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.